uh, this not, uh, material values. Well, what about? Uh, thank you. Somebody uh, was writing just so. From what country did you come from on my channel? Right here, down there, will be. What is your country? I want to describe some stuff, not from material values, but from moral values. For that, I I did remember that moral values existed. I was surprisingly remembering that in this time existed such kind of moral values as moral principles, moral principles. And these moral principles were part, were part of ideology. Um, in the Soviet Union, there was ideology of socialism and ideology of communism, as it was declared. Of course, this ideology was idealistic. This was disadvantage. Uh, some ideologists, they didn't want to follow the idea that idealistic ideology will not work, will not work effectively. It should be supported by some material stuff, it should be supported by some individualist, individual values. But in capitalist time, this was a, okay, this is a free economy, liberalization, and also liberal attitude to mentality, to for freedom of expression. In the Soviet time, ideology should be just one. Of course, anyone who could not follow to this ideology was suppressed. Especially it was clear in the Stalin's time, because all dissidents, so-called dissidents, who openly or hiddenly showed their an agreement with the state, an agreement with the moral principle, moral economical principles of a Soviet state, were punished and were going to Gulag. Gulag, this was a concentration camp in the Soviet Union. Who doesn't know? Gulag, this is huge camps in the Siberia, in the far away from centers of civilization in forest and bugs in the cold areas where people were killed, thousands, thousands, thousands of people in the Stalinist time and later, when all these dissidents who were disagreed, di dissidents and nationalists who expressed their disagreement with economical values and um, economical structure of the Soviet USA state were sent to these concentration camps, sometimes just for punishment, for punishment because they want to express their disagreement with the state, and it was not allowed it for people. So this why 99% 99.5% of people were agree with the state, were agree with the state sometimes, and people were silent, were silent like monkey. One monkey doesn't hear, one monkey doesn't see, and all other monkeys doesn't speak. So that's why all society doesn't speak. So this was a state of a monkeys. People want to say, we do not hear, we do not see, and we do not speak about it. So, but we just listen to the society, to principles, moral principles, should we accept it or not? It's difficult to say. But officially, what officially was, what was officially the moral, what was officially declared by the society? Actually, Communist Party declared in the program of the Communist Party special moral principles. For example, let's talk about it. I will put it in the description of this video. If you do not know that moral principles existed in the former USSR, you should accept it, you should not accept it. If you should not accept it, say about it, you will be punished. You should not accept it, but you can be silent, you will not be punished. You can make yourself like an idiot, you make yourself like a career builder, and you will get a promotion if you say. Hypocritically, you will say, 
I do support moral principles of a builder of a communist, as all communist people say, and members of his youth organizations, Komsomol said. And you could receive promotion in your career, for sure. Okay, let's tell about this moral principles of a society or oh, as the communist party said builder of communism should follow to these four moral principles first devotion to the cause of communist love for socialist homeland for socialist countries so because this was opposition socialist countries and capitalist countries you should you should be devoted to the deal to the cause of a communist party communist state support your homeland sounds not very bad because all in other countries the capitalist and the imperialist which wanted to suppress we wanted to destroy your, your homeland number two conscientious work for the benefit of society very special declaration who doesn't work he does not eat so that's why these people were isolated from the society everyone should be belonging to this any uh, special organization and should be working every should be working so majority people were working only in some cases disabled people invalid invalids where they didn't work so the declaration who doesn't work and this person doesn't eat this was kind of hypocritical declaration of a soviet morale moral principles number three everyone's concerned for the preservation and enhancement of a public domain okay that's meaning you should take care about public domain about farmland your homeland about your industry industrial all these properties this was kind of declaration but in result unfortunately it, it doesn't work in this ideal in idealistic declaration it didn't work because in the soviet time especially in the stagnation time of Brezhnev, people were thinking about public domain like their own domain actually what does it mean if you are living here everything belongs to the state so if it is belong to the state it belongs to me belong to me it means everything belongs to us and uh, people accepted it in for instance in, in different anecdotes and stories for instance our ukrainian uh, artist tarapunka in Stepsil, everyone who is just from old generation remember it Tarapunka and Stepsil said, if you're going to the, your farm or you're going, for instance, to industry, uh, for instance, to your plant, and everything what is in a plant can be yours. So that's why you can steal something. This means not stealing. It means just accepting. You can accept a little bit from your farm. You can accept, uh, you can own be owner if you are just in general owner of all state you can take something just for your home use a little bit from small pins from small equipment small paper from small to uh, to toilet paper or even just some uh, stickers everything or just all your working ex equipment from the plant and can bring it to home. And in Tarapunk and Stetsit, Tarapunk was alone and he said, actually, I'm bringing myself everything to work in my plant. So you see, he was bringing all just hammers, screwdrivers, and everything to, to his plant, to his working place. And it was very normal. But not everyone followed to this. He was taking care about enhancement of public domain but majority of many people were stealing many things for public domain because they had shortages in shops 
we had shortages in the houses. That's why we were stealing. And which was a really disadvantage of such hypocritical declaration. Well, what's about another moral principles? Okay, Coll principle number four, number five. Collectivism and comradely mutual assistance, each for all, all for one. This was also hypocritical declaration. Collectivism was officially claimed, and that's why it was uh, maintained by the society. And it was officially making a different, different work, like working in farmland, working in a collective farm, because actually uh, agriculture didn't work effectively. That's why some workers from the plant were going to an agriculture plant and was uh, driving just on, on a tractors to help agriculture because some farmers they didn't work effectively. That's why there was a lot of farmers who didn't work and they were waiting for workers from plants from the city to go to farmland to help them on tractors to collect uh, wheat to collect corn and but uh, the farmers could steal a little bit a little by little for their whole houses so that's why collectivism was not working very effectively uh, for instance very famous uh, movie about collectivism was a uh, Adventures of a Shurik. Adventures of Shurik. That people should follow to co collectivism and should work effectively together, for instance, in the building of bill or houses or future. And this was punishment for drinking, punishment for some behavior if you didn't work, if you didn't work in collectively collectively together for public domain okay collectivism so collectivism was opposite stuff to individualism and the, so in the present time in the time of a capitalism this is individualism this is a god so and, and moral value at present time we say individualism individualism and collectivism just opposite. In the Soviet time it was a collectivism, so now it say, no, you do not take care about public domain. It is it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the state. You have a list something for yourself, and this is only your private property. So public domain doesn't belong to you. Public domain already shared between rich people in the present time in the present time so that's why don't worry about it it's already not yours in the private capitalist society with a private market liberal market states heritage doesn't belong to you it's also boring it was also making such individualistic approach to people to steal everything and if it is doesn't belong to me I can steal something from another little bit from the state because if state didn't give it to me like forest land something state and say stealing and greed still exist in capitalist society and in socialist society as well but in socialist society in moral rules it was punished and it was declared as not very good. Okay, what's next? What was declared in the Soviet moral values? Number six, humane relations and mutual respect between people. Man to man is a friend, comrade and brother. This was a declaration, definitely. Humane relations and mutual respect between people. Man to man is a friend, comrade and brother. This was hypocritically declared because still for different people, people are very different. And this is not belonging to everyone. This is 
possible in case when, when everyone is satisfied with his situation. But at the present time in capitalist society, the declaration of uh, um, ideals, what is the ideal? Everyone against all, everyone against another. If Soviet state declared man to man is a friend, now we'll say individualistically in a capitalist society, one to one, everyone to everyone is a wolf. Yes, everyone to wolf. If there are some sheep, some stupid sheep, some human, which like sheep, which are very not active, they are not active in a capitalist society. There are a lot of wolves around. They are not comrades. In a capitalist society, they are not comrades like in a so socialist society. They are not your friends. They may be declare yourself as a friend. They are wolves. They will eat you, they will kill you, they will steal something from you, they will punish you. Com capitalist society, more suppressing this socialist and collectivist idealistic approaches and support individualistic approach to be wolf or just not to be a brother but this is uh, can be discussed what's number six seven declaration of honesty and truthfulness moral purity simplicity and modesty in public and private life so this was a declaration definitely Honesty, honesty, truthfulness, moral purity, simplicity, and modesty in public and private life. So, and this was, and it was regulated by the society. Now, okay, but some of this stuff was controlled, not controlled, but was declared by principles from religion. religion but religion was not supported in the Soviet Union. So that's why if somebody was belonging to religious lawyers or were going to the church, it was not supported by the state and in many cases was punished. But in late 80s, 70s, 60s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and later, state didn't pay too much attention to their religion, to their religion. So, and, but still paid about purity, simplicity, and modesty in public and private life. What about next? Number eight, mutual respect in the family, care for bringing of children. I was talking about it. Children and family were supported by the Soviet Union. Number nine, intransigence to injustice, parasitism, dishonesty, careerism. Money grabbing, so not to, not acceptance, not acceptance of injustice, parasitism, dishonesty and careerism, money grabbing, money grabbing, careerism, and dishonesty and parasitism was belonging to the another moral principles who does not work, does not eat. So it was against people who want to to break the rules and to steal something. Or to be parasit to par parasitize parasitize on values of a society who wanted to use it for their personal advantages. So that's because the money was not the ideal and when it was not a value in the Soviet Union. Not was the major value. But now in the capitalism, what was the most important, what is the one value in this capitalist society in the post USSR countries if you don't know this is not a human human person private life it's declared in the constitution it's declared some, somewhere in paper but ideologically ideologically there is no ideology no more in the post USSR countries but when one more one moral value Acceptance of money. Money is just one value in this society. Money will allow you to be
build career, career, money to allow you to own anything what you want, money allow you to make a promotion in the society as a, as an artist, as a, as a businessman, as, a, as another person, and money grabbing is not bad in the capitalist society, in the post USSR society. And now at the present time in post-USSR society, if you came from uh, democratical countries and from countries where liberally, liberty in the expression, so money is just one moral value. What's, what's next? Next, are we coming to the last principles? The number 10 principle was a friendship and brotherhood to the all nations of the USSR, intolerance of national and racial hostility. Okay, brotherhood was declared between different countries, dif different areas, and between different areas of the former USSR, which consisted 15 republics with different nations, and more than 60 and small nations existed, and exist still in the form of post-USSR countries. So brotherhood and friendship existed in the former USSR. And Russia's hostility and national hostility was punished. For that it was kind of a concentration camps in Siberia. Then, the final one, in intransigence towards enemies of communism the cause of a peace and freedom of people. And final one, fraternal solidarity with working people of all countries, with all people. Of course, all these uh, final principles were just kind of imagination, imagination which didn't exist in reality. What kind of a uh, fighting against enemies of communism? This was a special fighting of a special service in the society because the ideology was the socialist countries existing against capitalist countries that's why this was a huge competition beneath the carpet under the carpet so one service started to fight in other services and it was cold war between countries and which just gradually transformed, for instance, to the hot war in Afghanistan or in some small hot points, hot places all around the world, in Nicaragua, in Vietnam, in, in Sudan, in some way in Ethiopia, in some other countries, in, in Egypt and all other countries all around the world where Soviet state want to find friends and paid for these friends a lot of money, paid for the ammunition, for the equipment, for all the military weapons, huge money from the budget, from the budget, and want to receive this friendship from other countries on the base of money. And in these countries who Leaders were actually capitalists. They accepted all this money, definitely, and were stealing all this money and making this kind of a, a declaration that it doesn't work. So they didn't follow the principles of a equality and brotherhood. So that's why principles of equality and brotherhood in the Soviet Union, equality in low standards of life, and brotherhood between nations, which declared by the Soviet state as a moral principle, didn't work in other countries all around the world. And, of course, state tried to penetrate these countries, to, to find some support over, and to make some places all around the world for support of this former USSR. For their use, and it was not very easy work to make service all around the world to support the state and to fight against 
capitalist countries which were which had and we has not have now as well value of money and value to spread the influence all around the world in and all kind all time capitalist countries won't spread the colonialistic approach to all countries all around the world and even now the same colonial colonialism in the economy still exist. You will not say that colonism of the capitalist countries, such very powerful countries, the USSR, powerful countries in military equipment and in economy, as Britain, Germany, France, and others, we don't want to spread the economical values, economical interest all around the world in the former uses. Yes, we want. We want to buy something, we want to buy land, we want to buy factories, we want to buy to be to make ownership for different goods in all these countries. Why? Still because we want to receive some goods for cheaper prices. And for that we use the moral values of a free market. But today we were talking about moral values of a former USSR. If you didn't know about some moral values, official moral values, write in your comments under this video. If you knew about it, it will be interesting. What, what do you agree with me or you disagree with me in some point? Because I discussed in my first part of my presentation 30 minutes about not moral principle, but material principles, material situation in former USSR. And in my last 30 minutes was about, uh, well, even maybe less about moral principles of the USSR. Because not only the presence of a TV set, a refrigerator, and collectivism, declared the collectivism, maintain the society and maintain the ideology in the former USSR. Ideology existed in this time, ideology of collectivism, ideology of socialism and the equality between people. Now there is no ideology. People are not equal in, this, in the former, former USSR countries. People are not equal. So, but we have freedom in speech, freedom in expression of your ideal, your personal ideology. You can be disagree with society, you can agree with society, you can express your own opinion about leading party in your country, or you can speak against it. If you will speak too much, you will not go to the Siberias before you can go to the prison even now. So that's why I'm not talking about something strange, I'm talking about history. I'm talking about history. And if you are talking about something against in your country, post USSR country, you can be against your state, against your government, against your economical principles of your, and principles of your country. You will be suppressed. It's, it's, it's clear because every country is making kind of a special punishment of people who are against of this state. Even with a, with a freedom of speech, free, even in the USSR, in Britain, in France, and in Germany, freedom of speech is limited. It's not limited. You can speak something, but too much, speaking too much is too much dangerous. But at least now, in the former USSR countries, we have internet, we can speak about something soft, about something not dangerous, about history of former USSR. And it was not possible before, because in the Soviet Union, moral principles does not allow people to earn money, to be money grubbing, must be, as a, some pioneers said, I'm working, I'm serving to the Soviet Union. Now people do not say I'm sorry, my country, if you are not in a army or in special service, special service. Other people are just allowed to be 
just the people. You are serving for yourself. You are working for yourself. If you have skills, if you have knowledge, if you have moral ideology, it's allowed it for you to exist. And government does not pay too much attention to you in the present capitalism. You can exist, you can work, you can serve yourself and be quiet. Do not speak too much. Shut down. Shut up and be happy. So I, I really sincerely wish you to be happy. Speak something which is allowed in your country and follow rules in your own country. And I will put just this speech 